Hi, I'm Iris Fritz. I'm with Dunwoody College of Technology, and I'm here to talk to you again about radian versus degree measure. And this time we're going to focus in on taking degrees and then changing them back into radian measure again. So let's review a little bit of what we just got done doing in the last segment to make sure that we're all understanding what needs to be done for conversion. So you found out that pi radian or pi rad means exactly the same thing as 180 degrees. And let's not forget where this comes from. Again, this is about measuring circular objects or cyclical. Pretty soon you'll use this for sine waves. And measuring from here going around to this place is about is half, if you will, the circumference. I can measure it as, excuse me, pi r or pi radian versus another way of measuring it from the center and looking at angular change, 180 degrees. So either way, you're saying the same thing. And because this equals this, two different ways of saying the same thing, and because your math is good and you know that any number divided by itself is indeed any number divided by itself is indeed a form of 1. We get to use this unique form of 1 to help us get work done. Now in the last segment we used this way of looking at, if you will, a form of 1 to help us get rid of pi rad or convert into what we call degree measure. But another way we can use this simple form of 1 and remember, anything divided by itself or a form of itself is just another way to write the number 1. We're going to use this to help us convert from 60 degrees, in this case, in my example, but from degree measure back into radian measure. So let's play it out and see how it works. So here you have 60 degrees, and 60 degrees written as a fraction looks like this. And the reason why I'm doing that is I want to take, and isn't it true that any number times 1 means exactly the same thing? And any number times a form of 1 allows me to change how something looks, but not what it means. In this case, I want to change from measuring in degrees into something called radians, measuring with the radius. So let's go ahead and set this up. I look at what I want to eliminate. I don't want those degrees there. I actually want to get radians into the mix. So notice this form of 1 is going to allow me to bring radians in and get rid of the degrees. So if degrees are up in the numerator and you need to cancel them out, then you need to have the degrees in the denominator to be able to do the canceling. Again, this is a form of 1. I just talked to you about it in the last segment. It does nothing more than work as a power tool to allow me to get rid of the degrees and bring radians into the mix now. Now my unit of measure is pure, if you will, radian measure. So what are we left with? Look at what's left in the numerator. I have 60 times pi times radian. I have 60 pi rads over 1 times 180. And now what you need to do is simplify this. So if you stay in fraction form, you know that you can reduce this fraction because what is 180? 3 times 60. And if I take that apart for a second, you're going to see me take 180 apart. Isn't that the same thing as 180? So that you can understand that all I'm doing is I'm canceling out the 60 that was nested in this number. And what are you left with? Up in the numerator, you have 1 times pi times radian, and it's all over 3. Or a better way to write this for, if you will, radian measure, there's some formal ways of writing radian measure, is that you write, write the number part, which is pi divided by 3 first, and then you write the radians next to it. And this would be more formal notation. But this means the same thing. Let's do another one. 
because I think a couple of examples helps you understand things. So a couple of things. You need to get into a habit of really understanding your math and showing yourself what's going on is to your advantage. So show yourself units of measure canceling. Show yourself where you're at with your math. If you're not comfortable doing your number crunching, that's what I call it by hand, you guys do have a calculator. And if you take 60 and divide it by 180 in your fraction form, it will give you uh, 1 over 3. We don't generally show the 1. It's assumed 1 times anything is just that number, and it's over 3. And then, of course, there is formality, generally pulling the radian measure off to the side and writing the numeric portion first, which I'm sure your instructors talk to you about. So let's do some more. I'll come up with another number here. I'm just kind of winging it. Let's see. How about if we take, um, let's look at 90, 90 degrees, because I think that's something you're familiar with, 90 degrees. 90 degrees into radian measure. Let's see what it looks like. So 90 degrees can be written over 1. I'm now going to set up my form of 1 that's going to help me get rid of the degree measure and bring radian into it. So if you look over here, I want the radian measure up in the numerator and degrees down in the denominator because the whole idea is to cancel the degrees. And what are you left with? That's how easy it is. So now what you're left with up in the numerator, just writing underneath here, up in the numerator, you have 90 times pi radian over 1 times 180 is just 180, and simplify this. Well, 90 over 180 is the same thing as 1 half. 90 goes into 180 two times, right? And so what you're left with here is up in the numerator, 1 times pi rad is pi rad over 2. Or in better form, you would have pi over 2 radians. And this should make sense if you were taught how to take, if you will, the circle and cut it into fourths and start to look at some of the basic degree measure around the circle and versus radians. And I could always review that, too. And I think, actually, I did that in one of the circle lectures. So you can go back and maybe check out some of the circle lectures, and that will uh, explain a little bit of that thinking to you. So hopefully that helps. And I think we can get one more in today, because, you know, it's better to do too many than too little. That's what sinks information into your head. So you want repetition in this. You want to make sure that you understand what you're doing. When you understand something, it doesn't leave you. It's in your long-term memory, and it stays with you forever. It allows me to retain a lot of information, because I pounded my brain for many years to get to where I am today. So let's go ahead and learn some more because it's kind of fun. I love to learn. And this time, I'll see if I've got a, a fun one written down. Oh, I have a good one. How about, um, eh, I don't know about that one. I'm thinking. Oh, let's do 120 degrees. Something over 90 degrees. 120 degrees and see what we get in radian measure. OK. So I have 120 degrees. Oh, I so don't want the degrees there. I want to get radian measure into the mix. I'm going to multiply this by the appropriate form of 1 that lets me get rid of degrees. So the 180 degrees sits down here. And up here is pi rad. Remember, they mean the same, just two different ways to say the same thing. And what it does for you is it lets you cancel out the degrees. And what are you left with? And let's write a nice, clean form. And then we'll clean up our answer. So now, up in the numerator, I have 120 times pi rad. I have 120 times pi rad over 1 times 180. And you know the routine. Simplify. And so when you simplify something like this, now I'm going to do it by hand because I don't have a calculator. 
I'm thinking you probably do. You go 120, you use your fraction key, divide it by 180, and isn't it so beautiful? It does the reducing for you. However, knowing a little bit of math is to your advantage. I like to take things apart and cancel. So I look at, uh, I look at 120 as and I'm not sure if you want to do this, but it's up to you. I always look at this as 3 times 4 and then times 10. And I look at 180 as 18 times 10. And what's 18? 18 is 2. It's times 9. It's times 10. You don't have to do it this way. It is how I like to do things because I think it makes a lot of sense. I'm going to cancel the 3 out of 9. That gives me 3 here. Cancel the 2 here. That leaves me with 2 here. What am I left with? 2 over 3. And so I come over here. I have 2 pi radian over 3. And that is indeed your answer, but let's write it in a more effective way that it follows, if you will, talking in radian measure. And that's that we put the 2 times the pi, because remember pi is just a number, but we leave it in pi form. It's over 3, and we pull the radian off to the side to be a little more formal. And I'm hoping that helps you think. So again, I look forward to you reviewing all of the circles that we talked about the other day. I think that puts you into a position to better understand this. And then take and keep it so simple. Sometimes keeping it simple without oversimplifying allows you to see the bigger picture. And it really allows you to understand the simplicity of a lot of things that we do in mathematics. I look forward to seeing you again.